Welcome to the Abyss, I am the Abyssal Drink, and in this video I would like to discuss Zeri. First going over what her basic abilities are, and then going a little bit more deeper into them with a few tips and tricks that I have discovered in my limited playtesting, and then finally thoughts on what would be the best type of build for her. Her passive is Living Battery and is rather simple. When she damages enemy shields, she will gain part of that damage for herself as a shield, and will gain movement speed whenever she receives a shield. Very simple passive with not too much to really think about. Zeri's Q is Burst Fire. Passively, she'll build up charge as she moves and deals damage with her non-passive auto attack. Her passive auto attack is a spell that deals a little bit of damage unless the enemy is below 35% HP and consumes some of the charge that she's been building up. But at maximum charge, she'll deal additional damage as well as max HP damage and slow. Actively, Zeri fires off a burst of attacks that are treated like auto attacks, stopping at the first enemy hit, applies crit, and on hit, but only one time per enemy, as they can hit multiple enemies should the situation arise that it happens. The cooldown and the cast time go down with attack speed, although your attack speed is capped at 1.5 attacks. However, the excess attack speed is converted into attack damage. Her W is Ultra Shock Laser. Basically, it's a Jinx Zap that deals magic damage. It hits the first target and slows, but if it hits terrain, it will instead become a laser that goes out a set distance and applies all the effects in the area, its cast time scaling down with attack speed. Zeri Z Spark Surge is a short dash that will allow her to ride whatever terrain she touches all the way to the other end. After using it, her next three Qs will pierce all enemies that it hits, scaling up to full damage at maximum rank, but only applying on hit once. If she hits a champion with attacks or abilities, she reduces the cooldown, but she does not reduce the cooldown with her uncharged attacks from her Q passive. Her ultimate is Lightning Crash. She deals AoE magic damage to enemies, gaining 3 stacks of overcharge for hitting champions for a few seconds, these stacks giving her 2% movement speed. If she hits an enemy champion with attacks or abilities, she will increase her stacks of overcharge and refresh the duration for 2 seconds. While she is overcharged, she gains increased attack speed, on hit magic damage, and burst fire is a faster attack, meaning that you can fire it off a little bit more often, and you'll also cause lightning chains that will apply the on hit from this effect, as well as a bit of additional physical damage to other enemies. The physical damage of this ultimate can critically strike, and your uncharged attacks from your Q passive do not affect the overcharge duration. So the Q is a fascinating idea for auto attacks. It's almost a different version of what some people might think Ezreal is, or at least when you first try him out since his Q is kind of what his entire kit revolves around, but Zeri takes it to the more logical 80 carry solution where the attack really is capable of critting and is not all that much of a glorified spell. The Q, because it can be blocked, is not exactly the greatest for last hitting and it is a spray burst. I remember that Riot didn't want to do a spray burst back when they were originally making Jinx because they thought it would be very awkward, but it seems they figured out the solution by making her regular auto attack just a little bit of a wimpy spell, but because it does do increased damage to enemies below 35% HP, it is reliable in terms of last hitting, but it does consume a little bit of charge, and if you are at max charge, it might be better off to just save it for a bit of poke, but it is a much shorter range than the Q actually is. The Q is able to hit multiple targets, but it's not a very wide spread. 
if two targets are right next to each other you can aim it in just the right way for it to hit them both but of course the damage won't be all that impressive unless you are using on hit in which case it will affect them both at the standard rate of it all what's the most interesting about this auto attack is that when you do manage to get a last hit with it if it does kill and there are still bullets left firing through the air they will continue traveling on to their maximum range something to take note of the maximum range it doesn't seem to change even when you have lethal tempo and neither does your passive Q auto attack manage to do this as well the ranges of both of these attacks stays the exact same despite the lethal tempo change. At least that's what it felt like for the Q burst fire attacks, but the passive attack is not affected since it is treated as a spell. It should be taken to note that even though your Q is treated like an auto attack, if you are silenced you still cannot cast it, and any changes to your attack speed such as a Malphite slow will cause the cooldown to be greatly increased. The W is a rather simple thing that doesn't have too many complications with it. However, when used in conjunction with the E, you can pull off a pretty neat trick. The W does not extend its range through a wall like a Zoe bubble will, However, while you are riding through the terrain, you can still cast your W, but you can't cast your Q. The W will cast exactly where you want it to cast and will become the laser at that very point. Worth mentioning, the distance of the laser does not get affected by how close or how far you were from the terrain when you hit it with W it will always be the same range, so if you hit terrain at maximum range, you will still get the laser at its maximum range. Something that could help you maximize a little bit of your damage within a short window of time, Zeri is able to fire off her W, her passive auto, and her Q auto roughly around at the same time. This can allow her to deal a significant amount of bursts within a short window when surprising a single enemy. This can also help you in lane if you do not have enough charge to get off a max charge attack, but you still want to put out a little bit more damage. Your Q autos and your passive autos can pretty much be used back to back, your passive autos still following the rules of attack speed even though they are still treated as a spell. An important thing to note when using your ultimate, you have to hit at least one champion to gain overcharge at all. Just ulting on its own will afford you nothing and you will be down without a cooldown and no steroids. Zeri should not be thought of as an AD AB carry, just an AD carry who happens to deal some magical damage. While she does have AP scaling, her AP scaling is mediocre to be fully honest and the only thing she has is an initial burst combo at the very start of the fight. She has zero consistent magical damage in the form of her normal passive auto attacks and her single target W unless you happen to be behind terrain. But really you only ever want to use her fully charged passive auto since it deals the most damage and applies a slow, the normal auto only being really effective for last hitting in the early game and for additional damage in small skirmishes. As for whether crit or on hit is better, there's probably not all that much of a difference and more just a preference of play. Perhaps on hit is better for dealing with tanks due to all of the mixed damage, or maybe it would just be crit. Either way, it doesn't really seem to matter all that much. Something interesting you can do with Kraken Slayer if you happen to hit two targets, this will cause Kraken Slayer to stack two times, meaning you can fire it off a little bit faster. And with a Rage Blade, this basically means hitting two targets with your Q is going to afford you a Kraken Slayer shot. 
as well as any other on hit effects that you have. Would this be preferable to just hitting one target with all of the autos? I am not sure of that. What I am sure of is this only happens so long as you are not empowered by your E, since your E only allows on hit to apply to the first target hit. And that's about all that I have in terms of what I have learned about Zeri. There might be a few more things, but playing against the AI can't afford me everything. What I do know is that Zeri is a very interesting champion and is definitely not what people were expecting. Many jokes get told about how Riot seems to not understand that they overload kits at times, but Zeri's kit doesn't feel all that overloaded at all. Sure, she's got a few things going for her and it will take time to understand and fully learn how to play her in game, but she seems like a rather decent and probably one of the more unique hyper carries. At least that's what I see out of her. Anyway, I hope this was informative, if not enjoyable at the very least. Thank you for watching. I am the Abyssal Drink, and I must bid you adieu.